the sun, it is a sphere of very hot gases with a wobbling diameter of 1.39 million kilometers. It emits a massive amount of energy. This energy is estimated to be 3.8 times 10 to the power 20 megawatts, or in other words, 63 megawatts per each meter square of its surface. A tiny fraction of this energy is able to reach us here on Earth, which is estimated to be 1.7 times 10 to the power 11 megawatts of energy, still very massive amount of energy. In fact, if we are able to collect this energy for only 84 minutes, we will be able to satisfy the energy demand of the whole world for the whole year. So the world starts to use solar energy in many different applications, like heating and cooling buildings, heating water for industrial and domestic applications, generating electricity, and much more. In order to understand how to use solar energy, we should know a very important angle, which is our topic in this video. If this is the sun and this is the earth and we are at a point on the earth's surface and then we put a solar panel on a specified orientation, our goal in this video is to calculate what is called an incidence angle, which is the angle between the ray that comes from the sun and the normal to the panel surface, but in order to do this we will have to understand some other angles. These angles are latitude angle, hour angle, declination angle, altitude angle, zenith angle, azimuth angle, tilting angle, surface azimuth angle. First, the latitude angle. If this is the Earth and this is what we call the equatorial plane, it is a plane that splits Earth into two sections, the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. If you join the center of the Earth by your position on the Earth's surface, you will get a line. The angle between this line and the equatorial plane is what we call the latitude angle, and it takes the symbol L. If we plot curves of constant latitude angles, we will get horizontal circles. At the North Pole, the latitude angle is 90, while at the South Pole, the latitude angle is negative 90, and it is zero at the equator. Second, the hour angle. If you project the line connecting the center of the Earth with your location onto the plane containing the Sun and the Earth, and then join the center of the Earth by the center of the Sun, you will get another line. The angle between these two lines is called the hour angle. Unlike the latitude angle, this angle not only depends on your location on the Earth's surface, but also depends on time. As the Earth revolves around itself once per day, the hour angle of the same location changes with time. If we plot curves of constant hour angles, we will get semicircles. When you are at noon time, the hour angle is zero. If you are after noon, the hour angle is positive. Before noon, it is negative. If you plot 360 lines of constant hour angles, these 360 lines correspond to 24 hours a day. So the time difference between each two lines is 4 minutes. Third, the declination angle. Earth not always rotate about an axis perpendicular to this plane. In fact, this axis can deflect by some angle, which is the declination angle. The declination angle changes as Earth revolves around the Sun through the year. This angle causes many important things to happen here on Earth. It causes a change in the length of the day and the length of the night. As you can see, when delta equals to zero, the length of the day equals to the length of the night at all points on the Earth's surface, while if the declination angle is positive, the length of the day in the northern hemisphere is longer than the length of the night. 
This can be clearly seen from the top of the earth, and all of us see that happen during summer, while during winter the declination angle is negative, and the length of the day is shorter than the length of the night. The opposite is true in the southern hemisphere. On the other hand, people at the equator always have the length of the day equals to the length of the night, regardless of the season we are in. A very strange fact happens at the North Pole and the South Pole. They will have the full 24 hours either day or night, depends on summer or winter. And this is a graph that shows the value of the declination angle through the year. The formula used to find the declination angle at any time looks like this, where n represents the number of the day, where 1st January equals to 1, while 31 of December equals to 365. Next, the altitude angle. Because Earth is too large, we see it as a flat plane. This flat plane is tangent to the Earth at our location. Notice that this flat plane is the horizontal plane from our perspective. If you join our location by the center of the sun, which represents sun rays, the altitude angle is the angle between the sun ray and the ground plane. This angle can be calculated through this formula. Keep in mind that the altitude angle at the sunset and the sunrise is zero as we don't have to look upwards to see the sun at those times. So we can put zero in this formula to find our angles for sunset and sunrise at any location. By doing this we will be able to find the length of the day and the length of the night. And this is the formula to calculate the length of the day. Next, zenith angle. It is the angle between the normal to the ground and the sun ray, or in other words, it is the complementary angle of the altitude angle, which means their sum equals 90 degrees. Because these two angles are complementary, so the sine of the first angle is the cosine of the second angle. Next, azimuth angle. If we project the sun ray over the ground plane and then draw our compass that points in the four directions, north and south and east and west, the angle which formed between the projection of the sun ray and the south direction is called azimuth angle and it can be calculated using this formula. Notice that if you are at noon time and you are at the northern hemisphere, the azimuth angle will be zero and the sun will point in the south direction, while if you are in the southern hemisphere, the sun will point in the north direction. Next, tilting angle. When we put a solar panel inclined to the horizontal ground at some angle, this angle is called the tilting angle. Finally, surface azimuth angle. If this is the normal to the panel and this is its projection on the horizontal ground. The angle between this line and the south pole is called surface azimuth angle. And finally, this is the formula to calculate the incidence angle theta in terms of the previous angles. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and give me your feedback in the comments below. Thanks for watching.